Hi, in this video we will set up the NetApp Fighter to use our previously configured LDAP proxy. And um, the first thing we need to do is basically make sure that name resolution wise everything is fine. So uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to ping the NetApp uh, One Fighter so from, from, my, uh, from my Ubuntu machine that is my NetApp, uh, my LDAP proxy. Um, Uh, I can ping it by fully qualified name and I can ping it probably as well at short name. So yeah, this is looking fine on that end. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to switch to the net app. And uh, let's take a look if I can do the same. So there you go, I'm able to ping it by short name and it's resolved the fully qualified domain so I'm good. So the first thing I need to do is, uh, from an LDAP perspective, we need to configure the base. So that's uh, the OU or container in which we're gonna start searching from. Uh, we're gonna specify the LDAP server. We're gonna specify the Active Directory domain. We're gonna um, uh, remap that uh, user password attribute as well. And then we're gonna enable that and edit the nsswitch.com file. Uh, later we're going to do some testing. So let's go ahead and uh, it's going to be a, a, quite a bit of typing here. So options uh, LDAP base and it will be DC equals and my domain is corpcontrolso.com There you go. So the next one we're going to do is specify the LDAP server. And this is key here. Uh, in a true uh, deployment environment, you need to have multiple LDAP uh, proxies running, okay? I'm going to specify the domain. Specify the mapping. And the reason why I'm uh, setting it to CN is because in some instances there may be a query for that attribute and since that attribute is basically nothing, we want to make sure that we return something because sometimes this may cause issues. We did the same thing with the RFC. 2307 map file. Now we're going to enable it. And it should be on. But we need to uh, make sure that uh, LDAP is the first uh, search on the nsswitch.com file. So we're going to go ahead and modify that file. Let's, let's take a look at it first. As you can see, notice that uh, for uh, hosts is okay. We're gonna modify pass password, uh, group, and shadow. So password is for users, group is for group, and shadow is for um, legacy shadow files, which are not used anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and, and in this case, it would be uh, Etsy. We're not using this, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna modify the file a little bit. So hosts, I'm gonna do files and DNS. Password is just user. We're gonna do LDAP and then files net group I'm going to keep it the same
I gotta get the file again. And here you go, we have our file that has been modified. And uh, at this point, we should be able to start looking at some of the results for queries. So um, let's uh, just verify the options. Uh, it's pretty fast, but let's just make a query. So one thing that we could do is do a WCC minus U for a Unix perspective and look for, I don't know, Jerry. So WCC minus U, in this case, uh, Jerry. He's Unix enabled. And there you go. We found the UID start, uh, ends with 405. So it was able to discover that now we have the right, um, you know, uh, the right uh, UID. Before we were coming with that 65 something that is nobody or root. Uh, let's take a look at somebody else. Maybe George. Actually, this is um, um, not gonna get, not gonna find it. Let's take a look at uh, this guy. I was able to find it, Elaine. So that's from a Unix perspective, is able to use them. Uh, George is a special case. I gotta talk about that later in another video. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, the other way for the Windows side. Let's take a look at Elaine. And there you go. Everything is very consistent. One thing that we could do is um, uh, test the NSS calls. And the way we do it is uh, by enabling private um, debug. So let's go ahead and do priv set diag. And there's a function that is available. It's get xx by yy. So it's basically kind of like the uh, get user by UID or um, information by, by UID or by name. So uh, it's basically like this, get xx by yy. And then uh, we could do help and see what we have. So we have uh, get uh, password by name. That means get user by name. We could do something like uh, get xx by yy and um, uh, get pw by name underscore r and then uh, jerry. We were able to get um, basically the POSIX or um, the IFC 2307 information for this user. Uh, let's verify that we could do that for George. And here it is. Um, that's an override right there. That means that the overrides are working. Let's do it the other way around. So um, we know we can see um, George's UID. So let's do uh, get PW by UID minus R underscore R. And then uh, this will be one 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 four nine two four zero four zero four oh six. And here you go. So we were able to look up by name, by UID, which basically demonstrate that now we have the consistency, consistency that we were looking for. Now we can get people's UIDs from their uh, NT or Windows identity, but also we can get uh, people's identities from their um, RFC 2307 attributes. And that's the setup for the NetApp filer. And uh, the next video, we're gonna go ahead and test it.